Hello and welcome back to another edition of The Creative Quarantine, born out of necessity and fueled by imagination. And this week, we're taking this and making paper. All right, let's see what we're gonna need to do that. This week's list is a little bit different. Uh, this one breaks down into an essential list and an optional list. And some of those things could go back and forth depending on how you look at it. So you could buy a mold and decal from uh, Amazon and have that shipped to you. Yes, that does make it easier, but we're trying to do this with stuff that you have at home. So first thing you're gonna need is a metal hanger and a pair of pantyhose. I raided my wife's pantyhose drawer and uh, we're stuck at home, so uh, until we can go out again, hopefully she won't notice. You're gonna bend that hanger square and stretch the pantyhose over it. And believe me, this works great. You're going to need a tub. Uh, I went through and used an old kitty litter bin, washed it out, works fantastic. Uh, you're gonna wanna have a blender. Uh, makes things way better if you do that. Uh, you're going to want to have lots and lots of towels. Uh, let me stress, you cannot have enough towels for this project. A sponge works great. I don't have one of those right now, so I'm actually using even more towels. Uh, and of course, to make paper, you're going to need uh, either paper out of your shredder bin um, or junk mail. If you have a lot of reds and yellows, that's going to dye your paper and make it go that route. Uh, if you have a lot of stuff out of your shredder bin, you're going to go slightly off gray color. Uh, if you have a lot of things that are heavily printed, like the um, security envelopes, those are going to make things go a bit more towards the dark gray paper. So an essential is household scissors to be able to cut all of that up. A paper shredder. Um, believe me, those help a lot. Later on, after you have your paper made, uh, one of those things that really, really helps is your iron and ironing board. And with that, you're also gonna want parchment paper. So on that optional list is some type of a strainer. Uh, this just makes things easier to um, save a lot of that paper pulp that you're making for later projects. And then you're looking at, depending on what you wanna make with your paper, uh, cookie cutters uh, are one of those fun things. A rolling pin is good for various techniques. And anything that you think of as an additive to put into that paper for interest, uh, such as seeds, um, string, leaves, uh, anything of that sort. Another thing that I think that helps but isn't necessary uh, is some type of a container to hold water just to be able to pour stuff in. All right, now that I think we've uh, covered everything, let's see what we can create. Okay, now that we are set up and ready to start blending paper, we have our bin here for our pulp and water. We have our blender. And of course, we need paper. So I put it through the shredder. And then I took my household scissors and cut it up into even smaller pieces. And then I put it in a pot with water to soak overnight. Soaking takes a lot of the strain off of your blender. You can just put paper and water in there uh, but it takes a lot longer to get it into a good pulp. So you can see that the paper wants to clump together, break it up just a little bit. Again, to make it easier on your blender. Add a little bit of extra water to give it some solution to blend into. And then I like to use the pulse settings to get it going. And then I move over to a full blend until everything moves freely with no strain on the motor. So you're not hearing anything that goes ee, ee, ee. After you get a nice gooey consistency, dump it into the bin and start a new batch. I like to just put pulp with the excess water into the bin.
Now that you can see that we've done a lot of blending, we now have a bin full of more pulp than water, and we want to be able to have the paper pulp float in a solution. Uh, so the last part I do before the blender is done is I put just water in there, blend it up to get all that excess pulp out, pour it in there, and then play with it uh, to find that proper consistency. So I'm adding more water so that way when we agitate the pulp there's something for it to actually be suspended into. This is one of those things you may have to play a bit with to find your proper consistency. Now that our pulp bath is ready to go, we are going to take our makeshift decal and we are going to dip it down the side of our bin so that way it gets underneath all of that paper pulp. We want to try to prevent any paper pulp from being sandwiched down below it. Agitate the pulp, suspend it in water, and kind of give it a shake as you're coming up and this will help you end up with a more consistent sheet thickness. If you come just straight up you can see that we're getting way too much pulp in blobs and that is not going to make a good sheet of paper. We want to make paper not cardboard. You could also bring that up just a little bit so it's near the top but still being able to be suspended in water. And kind of work out some of those thicker areas. There will be lots of water that is trapped in this so tip it at an angle to help that water run off. The more water that comes out you can see that it will actually help it stick to our decal. And if you're in an area that you can uh, have light behind it, this will help be able to show how thick your paper is in any thin spots. As you can see, I have a few. I can work a little bit of that out when we move it to our cloth for drying but we want to try to have as consistent as possible at this point. Just makes it easier. I also like to clean the edge of the decal before I transfer it to the towel. This makes it much, much easier uh, for it to release. Plus, we don't want to waste any of our pulp that we've spent the time making. a little bit of water out and now because it sticks to the decal we smooth out our towel we can flip it right over and now this is where we take a cloth a sponge would be ideal but I have a towel that I will be pushing down with even pressure uh, to try to get out that excess water this is where we're able to kind of push those thicker areas into the thinner areas but still does not work nearly as good as having a consistent sheet to start with. So we're also compressing down all of that paper pulp fiber which is helping our paper to become stronger and stay together. You can wring out your cloth or go to another one to help suck up any excess water in there. Being careful to keep your decal on there, but you can see now that it was dry enough to release. And now I'm going to put it back on because we are going to want to flip it over to transfer it to another towel that is drier to help speed up that drying time. And you're going to want to shake that towel a little bit to help it release just so that way we don't end up with any rips or tears. And you can see here that it took on the consistency of the towel for texture. Another fun thing to do is actually take cookie cutters and I put that right onto the decal. I'm picking up 
as much pulp as I can grab in my hands and squeezing out excess water and putting it into the cookie cutter. Trying to fill it up about halfway. And you want to be careful, especially with sharper shapes, uh, that you don't put any holes or runs in those pantyhose because that will definitely affect the outcome of your paper. So kind of push it down in there, make it about as even as possible. I put my hand underneath and try to compress it down to get that excess moisture out and to give it strength. And after you get it done fairly well on here, uh, move it to the towel so that way uh, you can squeeze out even more excess water. And that's what it looks like when you pull it out. Another fun thing that you can do is add seeds to your paper. Uh, we like flowers, but I did not have any flower seeds at home, so we're gonna be using pepper seeds. So I have my decal under the water. I bring it up so I can have that pulp on top. And now I dump my seeds on the top, lower it down so there's a little bit more water, uh, work them into the paper because if the seeds are in the paper it will hold them in place so they don't pop out kind of working them in making them more even throughout the paper uh, now that I know where my seed concentration is uh, I can remove all of that excess pulp uh, so I can use it later and trim down the sheet that I'm making uh, because these will actually end up being tags for Mother's Day I can cut them down, write on them, and attach them to the Mother's Day gift. She can take that, plant it, and get uh, peppers to come up, because who doesn't like peppers? This also works with flower seeds really well. And as you can see, the seeds are in the paper. Another one of my favorite things to add to paper is string. I like to go with brighter colors, uh, so that way you can kind of see it and it looks more intentional. Uh, cut them down into different size lengths. Put your decal underneath, agitate the paper pulp and you can see here that we're getting thinner uh, so there is more water in there than pulp this does help at times to create a more consistent sheet that is a little bit thinner so now that we have that there it's calmed down a little bit we take our strings in varying lengths some short some long shorter pieces are a little bit easier uh, to avoid that clumping but this is where you just spread them out. And just like the seeds, we want it to be in the solution itself. So as we start to pull up, agitate a little bit. You don't want to do too much because you still want to be able to actually see the string colors come through. And depending on what you're doing with your paper, this does add quite a bit of strength to it also. Bring it up slowly so you don't lose the strings off the side. Again, get that excess water off. And continue like normal. Now that we're done making paper for the day, uh, and we've spent all the time prepping that pulp, we don't want to waste any of it. So this is where putting it through the strainer will separate the excess water from that pulp. And we can make ingots. So it will speed up your paper making process next time. So all of that pulp that's in there, scrape it, helping that water to drain. You can start to pack it on top of itself.
squeeze out as much water as possible. So you end up with a ball. And now flatten these out to make pulp pancakes. Being thinner, they will dry much easier and run a lot less risk of getting mold in the middle of those. And after these dry out, uh, they are hard. And next time, all you have to do is take those, soak those into the water, and uh, that will speed up your paper making process the next go round. Make sure that you scrape the bin, getting as much out of there as possible. And whatever you do, do not put this down your drain. This does harden like a cement, and in these times, we definitely don't want to have to call a plumber. So after I strain everything, I actually dump this water outside into my driveway just to make sure that I'm not getting anything down my drains. Okay, so this paper has now dried for around 24 hours and it has enough of the moisture out of it to, for us to be able to move it around, uh, but it does have a very rough texture to it. So if you want smooth paper, uh, I went through, cleaned off the counter, uh, which is a nice hard smooth area, and I'm taking my rolling pin and I am going to lightly roll across. Make sure you don't push down a lot because we don't want to ruin the paper. And you can see immediately how it smooths out that texture, along with being able to soak up the water onto the roller. Go in all directions. This does help compress it down. Carefully lift it up, flip it over, and get the other side. And now set this off to the side so it can continue to dry. Okay, so in our drying process, because we are not in a professional setting, we don't have that press to be able to keep that paper nice and flat. So we'll end up with some wavy paper. So this is where we take our household iron to be able to get it nice and flat. And we don't wanna to touch the iron directly to the paper itself. So this is where we will take our parchment paper, cut off a piece, put our paper directly onto the ironing board, put the parchment paper on top, and then on a high heat setting, we slowly and carefully iron our paper. And you wanna make sure that you keep things going and moving, you don't wanna stay in any one spot too long. And make sure you cover all the corners. If you stay in one spot too long, it is possible to burn the paper, which can give an interesting look, but isn't what we were going for with this. So I've done it on one side, I flip it over and continue to do it again. Depending on the thickness of your paper, this can be enough. Uh, every once in a while, if it's a thicker sheet, I will flip it over a few times just to make sure that we're as flat as can be. And will this 100% make it flat? No, but again, we're making handmade paper. And that's one of the fun elements of making your own paper. All right, now that the hardest part is done, at least for me, uh, the drying time. Uh, so now let's take a look at some of our results. Uh, what are we looking for? We're looking for pages that are consistent in thickness uh, and color, depending on the project that we're working on. 
Uh, so these did pretty well. This one has a little bit more texture or tooth to it, um, but I'm quite happy with them. All very even in thickness. Uh, so depending on the type of project that you're doing, uh, there's a couple things to keep in mind. This edge right here and this edge here are what they call a deckle edge. That's the edge that naturally comes out of using the mold and deckle. Ours is a little bit different than what you would get in a professional model, uh, but you still kind of get that natural edge where it's a little bit thinner, uh, wavier, and it um, uh, just has a lot of interest to it. The paper that we make is not always the right size for the project that we're working on. So what do we do? We can take a straight edge, put that down, and rip up the piece on the outside and that will give you a nice straight line uh, that is very similar and close to that deckled edge. And then the other edge is a cut edge that is going to be nice and smooth. So depending on the project, uh, you may need to take advantage of all three of those. So just to take a look at a couple of other sheets. So if you spend more time soaking the paper the night before and then putting it through the blender, uh, you're going to get a much smoother tooth or texture to the paper versus going straight in and just taking that dry paper and the first time the paper hits water is when it gets into the blender. You can see much heavier texture on this paper. Uh, so these are a little bit thicker, uh, heavier tooth. This is one that went through with the soaking and um, uh, I rolled it and you can see that it's much, much smoother. These were just some other examples of how smooth they can get with taking the rolling pin to them uh, after they've been drying for about 24 hours. Uh, so this is what happens when they get really, really thick and start drying. You kind of get this desert drought cracking to it. Uh, interesting texture, I like it, uh, but very thick. Uh, almost something that I could use for a cover. If you go back to that natural egg dyeing, uh, this was one where I actually took the uh, purple cabbage, boiled it down and put it in there. It didn't have a lot of time to sit in the solution, uh, so you can definitely tell when we go to a whiter one that it's definitely a darker blue color. And I thought it was very interesting uh, that I got this dark blue right around the edge. So what are some of the other fun things that we can do with the paper? So a piece breaks off, what can you do? You can take thread and sew it back on, which means that you could also uh, do designs, uh, write words, and uh, just have fun with playing with thread. These were a couple of different sheets that I had done using thread in the bath, the pulp bath. Uh, this one you can see that that was the, the string that we put into it, the twine. Uh, it coated it very well on both sides. It's in there really well. Uh, so this is something that I could play around with if I wanted to try to make some type of a uh, package uh, with being able to tie it up into like a bow. Just things to play around with and have fun. All of those pages there I had ironed uh, so that they are relatively flat, not perfectly flat, but relatively flat. The ones that you cannot uh, iron afterwards are the ones that you put seeds in because we don't want to actually burn up those seeds. Uh, so you can see that this one was pretty thick and those seeds are on top. Um, they tend to pop out. This is the one that we mixed into the bath uh, and it did really well. So now this is one that I would actually probably go through, uh, cut down into tags and then uh, use as like a tag on a Mother's Day gift. Another fun thing to do is to actually mold it around some type of a design. Uh, I stitched it closed and uh, this one will actually end up uh, being kind of like our very first project, the paper lanterns. Uh, this one doesn't have any cut throughs in it, but it still projects light up, which is very fun. So these were some of the cookie cutter shapes that I did. Um, these are a little thick. These actually took a few weeks to dry out. I'm surprised I didn't get any cracking 
with those. Uh, and this is the one that I did uh, for the video and uh, much thinner. Uh, and I'm very happy with this. This is something that I would actually like to put seeds in and then uh, go through and use it as a tag. And don't forget to make sure that you save those pulp pancakes for later projects. Thank you for joining me on this journey of paper making. And uh, if nothing else, I hope you found a much more satisfactory way of getting rid of that junk mail that arrives at your house. And uh, uh, please experiment with this, have fun with it. And uh, you know, as always, share those creations with us on our Facebook page.